Glaciers, permafrost, and alpine tundra are just a few of the locations scientists are finding ancient viruses, some dating back to 8 million years ago. Let's take a trip into the unknown as we dive into the top 10 scientists who found deadly viruses hidden in ice. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the zombie virus. Fear began to spread after a 48,000 year old virus was found in Siberian permafrost. The revived virus, which has been given the name Pandora virus, Yadoma, was extracted from the ice by scientists with the French National Center for Scientific Research, who warned that there could be more just like this one, or even worse, that are waiting to be unleashed on the world as ice, that has been frozen for thousands of years, melts all over the world. The lead microbiologist on the study, Jean-Marie Olympic, warned that there has been limited research so far into these live viruses that are starting to be seen all over the globe. This particular virus was found underneath a lake, and while it only infects amoebas at this point in time, some people fear that it could mutate in a way that would make it then become infectious to humans. The study warns that there have been people and claims that quote, wrongly suggest that such occurrences are rare and that zombie viruses are not a public health threat. While it doesn't appear as if there's anything to worry about at this point, it's always good to stay informed. In our number 9 spot today, we have the glacier virus. Back in 2015, researchers retrieved glacial ice that came from more than 6,700 meters above sea level at the Galia Ice Cap in western China. The ice samples were taken for a study, and just recently the findings have been published. The lead author of this study, Zi Ping Zong, said of the findings, quote, These glaciers were formed gradually, and along with dust and gases, many, many viruses were also deposited deposited in that ice. As it turns out, inside of the ice, researchers found dozens of viruses that had never before been seen by humans. Their research was said to find genetic coding for 33 different viruses, at least 28 of which had never previously been found, and some of the viruses date as far back as 14,500 years. Those who found these viruses will continue doing research on them in order to know more about what they are, who they can infect, and see how they may be able to inform our knowledge on the viruses that we currently see in our modern world. In our number 8 spot today, we have the 1918 influenza. In 1951, scientist Johann Holten tried to isolate the 1918 influenza virus from people who had passed away from it and been buried in the Alaskan permafrost in a town called Brevik Mission. During the time when the virus was active, 72 out of the 80 residents of the town fell victim to it and died. Although Johann was able to unearth the bodies, he was unable to find any live viruses. 50 years later, however, he would get a second crack at it. In July of 1997, he read an article that had been published in the journal Science that was written by a virologist by the name of Jeffrey Taubenberger. This article was the initial genetic sequence of the 1918 flu virus, and when Johan saw this, he offered his help in the research once again. He returned to Brevik Mission and got permission again to dig up the victims of this flu virus. This time, he found a person who he called Lucy. Lucy was a victim of the flu and when she passed away she was roughly 30 years old and was obese. The only reason I mention that is because it was important in how she helped the research. The fat actually worked to protect her lungs from decay which allowed Johan to take both of them and inside there was enough material to sequence the complete virus multiple times over. This allowed scientists everywhere some of the most valuable insight into the virus that anyone could have asked for, and allowed us to learn that the virus originated from birds before mutating to infect humans. In our number 7 spot today we have the anthrax outbreak. Anthrax is not a new virus to the world, but recently, in a remote corner of the Siberian tundra, it has been rearing its ugly head once again. In 2016, in the Yamal Peninsula, which is located in the Arctic Circle, a a group of people had to be hospitalized and some even lost their lives as a result of an anthrax breakout. Scientists have explained that this breakout was caused by the thawing of the ground. The average temperature in Russia has increased 0.43 degrees Celsius in the last 10 years, but in some of the more northern regions, the rise has been more pronounced and it has resulted in more thawing of the permafrost soil that covers Russia, which includes cemeteries and animal burial grounds. Anthrax spores can survive 
have frozen in human and animal remains for hundreds of years, and as they thaw, they can be released back into the world in a multitude of ways. Humans weren't the only ones affected by this outbreak, as it is said that more than 2,300 reindeer also died as a result of the virus. In our number six spot today, we have Pithovirus Sibiricum. This is one of the two viruses that we'll be talking about today that were discovered by Chantal Abergel and Jean Michel Clavery of Aix Marseille University. The pair found the virus in a 30,000 year old sample of Siberian permafrost that was buried 30 meters or 100 feet below the surface of late Pleistocene sediment. The discovery was realized when the collected samples were exposed to amoebas, which then started to die. When examined to see why this was happening, they were found to contain giant virus specimens. Like many of the viruses on this list, at this point, the virus isn't a threat to humans, but its viability after being frozen for this long raises concerns for some about climate change and drilling operations that could potentially release more frozen viruses that are deadly to humans into our world. In our number five spot today, we have Molly virus. Part two of the viruses discovered by Chantel and Jean Michel, this virus was found in that same 30,000 year old chunk of Siberian permafrost. Its discovery actually marked the fourth ancient virus found frozen in permafrost since 2003, and it was quite a remarkable discovery. This spherical DNA virus wasn't just any old virus. The 30,000 year old virus was found to have a special way of hijacking its host's machinery in order to actively replicate itself, even after all of these years being frozen in the ground. Many people refer to this virus as a behemoth due to the size of it. Scientists have warned that having two viruses that retained their infectivity being found in the same prehistoric permafrost layer is definitely a cause for concern. In our number four spot today, we have ocean problems. As the climate of our Earth changes and ice melts, an unforeseen consequence is now being unleashed on mammals in the northern Pacific Ocean. Throughout the course of 15 years, researchers have found two new channels that link the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans between Russia and Alaska. This has caused some of the animals that live here to be interacting for the first time ever, and with this interaction comes the spread of a deadly pathogen called Focine Distemper Virus. The virus had been seen before, in fact it was first identified in European harbour seals when it killed thousands of them in 1988. It was seen again in 2002 and in 2004, but that time it was seen in northern sea otters in Alaska, which surprised researchers everywhere. This meant it had not only jumped species, but also oceans, which is what led to the study being done on how the melting ice is likely the culprit. Study author Tracy Goldstein, associate director of One Health Institute at UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine, explained that, quote, animal health and human health and environmental health are so linked. If one deteriorates, then the rest do too. While the virus hasn't yet been seen to infect humans, it does affect those who live and hunt in the area and rely on these sorts of things. In our number three spot today, we have the Alpine Project. This one is a little bit different than some of the others on this list because we are talking about one of the first ever projects that currently aims to study microscopic forms of life in the permafrost in the Alps, the Arctic, and the Antarctic. The project is led by Beat Frey of the Swiss Federal Institute for Forest, Snow, and Landscape Research. Of the research so far, Frey says, quote, we found that these organisms have a particular metabolism and cellular structure, which can be active at low temperatures. He continues on to say, quote, however, most of them are asleep. The big question is, what happens when they wake up due to climate change, for example? That is definitely the question this project is aiming to answer. While many scientists have expressed their concerns over the melting ice and what it could unleash, Frey shares these same worries, but also has some positive outlooks as well. He has said, quote, in the alpine permafrost, we have found bacteria, mushrooms, yeast, and viruses. Around half of them also exist elsewhere in the world. One third are unknown. While the unknown can be terrifying, it also opens us up to the potential that not all of the microorganisms found in the ice will be harmful. They're hoping to find some species that also might be helpful or provide us a certain use, like in the medical or biotech fields. Frey said, quote, we could use the properties of certain enzymes that are active at a low temperature. Bacteria found in permafrost could also prove important for gauging the resistance of antibiotics. It's just nice to have someone looking for the positives in this scenario that is pretty frightening to a lot of people. In our number two spot today, we have the eight million year old ice. Back in 2007, it was announced that Kay Biddle of Rutgers University in New Jersey, along with his colleagues, had been able to extract DNA and bacteria from a sample of ice that was found between three and five meters beneath the surface of 
a glacier in Antarctica. The ice was found in the Beacon and Mullins Valley, and the samples were dated to be somewhere from 100,000 to 8 million years old. Once collected, the researchers attempted to resuscitate the organisms, and they found that the younger ones began growing quite quickly, doubling in size every seven days on average. As for the 8 million year old sample, researchers found only one type of bacterium, which grew at a much slower pace, doubling every 70 days. Through examining the average lengths of the DNA found in the samples, they were able to determine that frozen DNA does degrade over time, and they believe that this happens through cosmic rays, which are definitely the strongest at the poles of the Earth. In our number one spot today, we have the ancient microbe. John Priskew is a Montana State University professor, and he is also spearheading a study into Antarctic microbiology. Through his studies, he has been looking at some of the oldest ice on Earth for what he calls the bugs in the ice sheet. He has been able to find living bacteria in the core of a 420,000 year old ice that he has successfully been able to grow in his lab. He explains that these frozen years for the bacteria is quite a fantastic evolutionary strategy for microorganisms because it essentially just stores them for a later re-entry into the world. He said, quote, it's a way of recycling genomes. You put something on the surface of the ice and millions of years later, it comes back out. Right now with the research, they're trying to figure out how these bacteria have the ability to live in such extreme cold environments because it's possible that this sort of thing could lead the way to the discovery of life on another planet with extreme climates such as ones that are frozen. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you again soon. Bye.